Hey everybody, Randall Cornet here. Hope you guys all had a great day. Um, there's some big news today that I wanted to come out. I'm gonna make a quick, I'll make this as quick as possible, I should say. Um, there's some pretty big stuff that I think that we should go over. Um, and I guess one of them being new OCC rulings that got passed. We're gonna go over that and what that means for you. And then I've also found some information to, that in my opinion um, is pretty bullish that um, is indicating that dark pools are not as scary as we think that they are um, and why it could confirm that more institutions are jumping on this daily uh and which i believe they expect that this price is going to go up as well as we do so that being said we'll jump right into it so what we're looking at here is the uh new ruling so it's the sr occ 004 um basically what this ruling is is um how they're gonna basically handle um the auction of a member that gets suspended for maybe not meeting a requir uh, margin requirement, liquidity issues, um, any reason that might get them suspended from the OCC, which is things like that, um, how they're going to handle auctioning off all of their assets, right? And so they could, through these assets, I mean, it means everything. They could liquidate their whole entire portfolio, any open contracts they have. Um, it's, the, it's the works, right? And the way that this works currently is... Um, you have a member that gets suspended from the OCC and then you have them go and they have some private auctions and people can come and like scavengers pick it apart and buy up portions of their portfolio or all of their portfolio. It really doesn't matter. Well, now there there's two things that kind of limit that from being an all out war and everybody going after it is the OCC, not anymore, but previously as of this ruling, right? It's not anymore, but previously you would have to have a basically you'd have to be pre qualified in order to participate in this auction that's uh, of somebody that's getting liquidated right so number one you had to qualify so there's bureaucracy that goes with that you know how that goes um but number two you also would have to be invited so that obviously if you're not invited and you're not pre-qualified you don't meet both of those uh requirements um you're not being able to you're not going to be able to participate in this auction so what this 004 basically is proposing to change or did change is now you no longer have to be pre-qualified and you no longer have to be pre-invited um, and what this is indicative for me is that if they're concerned with the amount of people that they would have participating in the auction not being able to actually uh, purchase all these assets or if some of the members that are getting margin called are the, uh, the uh, you know larger holders of assets, they want to make sure that they have enough buying power for people to come and pick all of this up, um, so they're not left with all of this bag, right? So they're basically easing up the ability or the restrictions in terms of people being able to participate in the auction. So now any member of the OCC can participate in these auctions now, so that you don't have to be pre-qualified and you don't have to be pre-invited. So they want to make sure they get out from under this and they can successfully sell all of these, you know, the, this bag. And they also want to do it at a market price. They don't want to take losses on it either. So them opening the floodgates on that, I think is pretty telling of where we're going. So moving past the ruling, because the rulings, in my opinion, really are kind of boring. I'm going to show you guys something that I found here, which is a dark pool indicator, okay? Um, and so if you guys don't know what dark pools are, it's their dark pools are off, uh, off exchange trading venues where, um, large institutions typically trade. So big blocks, you're thinking not, you know, 500 shares, hundred shares, even a thousand, you're talking big, big, big amounts of shares, right? Um, the transactions in, uh, the dark pools are required to still be made public though. And through analyzing activity in the data, it's possible to determine which stocks have high level of institutional buying or selling, right? Um, and so a lot of people have been really scared about what the dark pool is and how it works and applies to us. But according to some of these numbers here, I'm actually seeing a lot more buying than selling than what we're seeing in the dark pool. So that's pretty telling that there's actually more institutional buying going on than there is selling in the dark pool. If you look here, and this is uh, the bottom right, is the five day DPI. So it's 53%. Today was 56. So it's not fluky because you can see we've maintained over um, that 50% mark for, you know, five days. So that's pretty interesting. So there's 45 million in volume done 
um, today, right? This just today in the dark pool. But how does some of this information, so what does this mean? So, and obviously I'm still new to this uh, myself, right? But so this DPI score that we're looking at, this 53%, the five day, and the 56% for today. So here's kind of how it works, right? The dark pool indicator uh, tracks transactions which take place off exchange. Institutions which ex uh, engage in these trades are required to report them and through analyzing their activity, one can make important interpretations, okay? Um, uh, so let's see. So now if we go through, so how do we use this DPI? The higher the DPI, the inference is that there are large buyers accumulating the stock, right? So they're basically saying, if you have a larger percentage, there's more buyers going on in the dark pool. And here's what we know based off of aggregated S&P 500 data going back to January of 2018. Okay. So the S&P 500 is, is a collection. It's a big collection of all, uh, you know, the top 500 companies, right? So if you don't know what that is, but I'm sure most of you guys know. But so when the DPI is greater than 45%, right? Which AMC is greater. AMC sitting at 56% on a five day. Stocks have a positive return over the five, 20 and 60 day timeframes, right? Cause there's lots of institutional buying going on. Granted that doesn't take into account, you know, all the shorting and stuff that's going on, but at least we know the institutions, um, are coming in on the dark pool and getting in on this. And a lot of the reasons why an institution will do this on the dark pool too, is they can execute at cheaper prices. So they might save, you know, pennies on the dollar, but when you're dealing with such large volume, it makes a big difference, right? When the DPI is under 30%, stocks have a negative return over the next 20 and 60 day timeframes. So sitting at 53% on the five day average DPI, we're looking like, you know, according to that data, and obviously that doesn't take into account the amount of shorting that's going on, but I still think it shows sentiment that institutions are buying in and they're saying, hey, we're kind of going to ride this to the top as well with you. So I think it's positive to know that there's actually more buying going on in the dark pools than there is selling, um, which has led me to believe that it's not as scary as I really thought. So I hope that that brings you guys a little, bo uh, a little bit of comfort and relief and understanding that there's some much larger hands going on uh, at play than just us, right? So I hope that you guys found that pretty interesting. Um, moving past that, I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, so Barron's reported a new short squeeze in GameStop and AMC. Uh, a social media sentiment tracker says one is brewing. So according to Hype Equity, and they're a platform that does like social media um, activity, like analytics and data, and they gauge like what sentiment is based on how much something is popping off in social media. But it says, according to Hype Equity, a platform that compiles social media activity on individual stocks um, and social sentiment analysis said that mentions of AMC spiked more than 800% on Tuesday morning, uh, while mentions of GameStop soared over 1,400%. So we're looking good there, guys. I mean, the community is doing what we knew, we, what we've been doing, but it still shows that um, people are not really getting scared. I know these guys are kind of pulling out all stops, but... I think everybody's really living true to the, you know, adage diamond hands. Um, that being said, we can close off the video with some institutional buyers today. I will try and show show you guys, um, oops, some of that. So today there was two pretty significant ones. Um, Jane Street Group actually put, filed a 13F um, for 4.6 million shares worth of put. So they actually, I shouldn't say that. So I almost did the same mistake I did the first time. So they have puts that amount to 4.6 million shares, right? So that's 400 and, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. No, that's $4.7 million uh, in puts. And then they also did some call options. So their call options amount to 8.5 million shares in call options, no, in call in stocks, but that's what they're, uh, amounts equal to, which is 80 or $8.7 million. So I kind of got like, I'll just confuse right there, guys, threw myself off. Um, but yeah, so Jane Street's coming in big. That's a lot. You know what I mean? Another 13F filing, another big institution that goes back to what we were talking about with this dark pool indicator. Um, and remember that 
these dates is this 18 is just the filing date. So we can go back and we can look at when it was actually effective. It was the 31st of March. So um, this DPI that we were actually looking at earlier here, this percentage, um, it's uh, showing this daily number. So the, a lot of institutions that we're probably not even seeing that are being reflected in the 13 Fs are buying in at this point, right? So new ones, fresh stuff coming in. Um, with that being said, I hope that you guys have a better understanding of the new OCC ruling. I hope that you're not as scared as the dark pool. Um, you have some confidence that there are some big boys coming in to play with us. And I think they share our sentiment that this thing's going to the moon. Uh, with that being said, I love you guys. Long time. Peace. Oh, yeah. One last thing. Look what I got. And this is how I feel about the ruling, too. Back to the test. Woo! All right, guys. You take it easy. Peace.